Welcome to my 2021 college football season preview of Conference USA uh, with both my teams, Boise State and Liberty, as longtime subscribers to the channel know that I'm a fan of both teams. Uh, with both my teams, Boise State and Liberty, between them playing about half of Conference USA. Um, we've got a lot of stake in this conference and how they turn out this year. Just overall record, the better they play, the better it's going to make look Boise State, at least with that UTEP game, and then Liberty with, I think, over half their games being against Conference USA teams. Yeah, both, however the record the season goes for Conference USA, is going to make both my teams look good. So i got a lot of stake in them. I've uh, done a little bit of research into this, and we're going to get started here. Uh, every season, just kind of, I've, I've done all my videos so far in this series where I'm going through and I'm previewing the top 10, I'm sorry, not top 10, but the 10 FBS uh, conferences plus the independents. Um, as I've done in my introduction for all those videos, I'll just say it real quick. Every year, for the last four years, I've gone through the Athlon Sports Magazine, my favorite magazine, preseason magazine for layout, not my favorite for at, for analysis. I like Phil Steele for analysis, but my favorite seat, uh, magazine for as far as the layout goes. I've gone through it. I've kept track of what I think each team's going to do at the beginning, at, uh, as far as at least beginning of season-wise. At the end of the year, I go back and see how they perform, and every year I've outperformed uh, Athlon Sports, and I thought it was about time to put it up on YouTube, and that that way uh, I can have some proof to look back on and say, hey, uh, this is how I did. Now this season, of course, I've said it in other years, I think that I am probably going to be a little bit off just because this season is the hardest season to analyze uh, because of COVID-19 and what it did to the, the preseason last year as far as knocking out so many practices. So you really didn't get to see uh, teams performing at their peak or at what you would usually see coming into the first few games of the season until pretty much towards the end of the season there. And then also different conferences having different rules for uh, playing non-conference games or how many games were played. It's really hard to compare across uh, everyone else, especially now that non-conference games across the NCAA are back in business and returning to normal. But I'm going to give it my best shot. I fully expect quite a few of these teams to be a lot, very different from what I'm saying, but I hope that I can at least score better than Athlon Sports. That's been the goal, and we'll jump right into it here. So starting off with... Uh, Charlotte 49ers, uh, two and four season last year, seven six the year before that. So they were Charlotte was a team that's kind of been lower level of the Conference USA that was trending upwards with a seven six season that got set back. Uh, with a lot of game cancellations um, and a lot of issues just period in the games they did manage to play the two and four record I, I think that they were probably better than that two and four record but they do have a pretty challenging schedule this year as far as conference USA goes um, Athlon Sports is projecting six and six five and three um, they do return their starting quarterback but only five returners on defense despite seven returns on offense I think it's going to be a little bit worse than that I'm project actually a lot worse for Charlotte this year, I'm projecting a 3-9, 2-6 record. I just think it's going to be a little disappointing there for the 49ers fans. Um, I think that they're going to drop that game to Duke. I think they'll drop a game to Georgia State. Um, Middle Tennessee, I think they'll pick up wins here against Gardner-Webb, FIU, uh, and Rice. But just they play a pretty tough schedule as far as Conference USA goes. I mean, they have to play Marshall. They have to play Louisiana Tech. Um, they have to play uh, FAU. And FIU, both both have shown abilities to perform in the past. I think they'll be able to grab a win there at FIU. Uh, but especially the non-conference game against Duke, I think it's going to be a little bit of a disappointing season for Charlotte 49ers fans. But, hey, uh, huge potential for them to prove me wrong. This is kind of one of those teams that they could go 3-9 and nine or they could go 7-5. and five. And I'm excited to see which end of the scale they end up uh ending up on all right FAU Florida Atlantic uh, last season five and four 11 and three the year before that now of course they did have a different head coach at that point uh one of those I, I I'm told I apologize for this uh, I'm totally drawing a blank on who it was um that they had their coach there but it was it was a really high level uh power five coach who ended up get coming you know falling out of graces um due to some bad performances there on the field uh so he came back into the group of five rehab did a great job at fau and now he's back into it uh this year's rehab coach is willie taggart uh trying to rehab himself he had a pretty decent season last year the five and four record but not quite up to that 11 and three Man, it's right on the tip of my tongue who that coach was fau fans will know put it in the youtube comments to correct me i'll have looked it up by then but just put it out there to correct me anyway i deserve that uh, for totally drawing a blank on that anyhow um, FAU last season they did uh, decently well considering that there was a new coaching staff there but they do lose their quarterback and their running back uh, just well not sorry they don't lose their quarterback and running back but Athlon Sports is projecting two new starters for quarterback and running back after uh, di kind of disappointing uh, performances overall uh, Nick Tr Tronti was the starter last year with 900 yards passing uh, but he only threw for six touchdowns had three interceptions despite the fact that there's going to be potentially some turn turnover here uh, FAU does 
return 11 starters on offense. So all 11 starters are back. Probably going to be some change-up. Athlon Sports is projecting that there's going to be a new quarterback and running back um, in the starting position there after James Charles only rushed for 429 yards. Um, so potential for news change up there, but 10 stars back on defense, 11 back on offense, one of the most stacked as far as returning players go for uh, in the Conference USA. Athlon Sports is projecting 7-5, 6-2. Two. I think they're going to be doing better than that. I think William Taggart finally getting a chance to install his version of the uh, his vision for this team after having uh, COVID kind of throw that off the rails last year. I think they're going to go 8-4, and 6-2. Uh, they will drop that first game to Florida. I, I think even solid FAU fans will acknowledge that. Uh, but I think they can pick up wins against George Southern Fordham. Air Force is a tough game. I think it's going to be a close one. But ultimately, I think Air Force, they themselves are returning a ton of starters across the board, plus all the players that got sent home last year when they were playing on a skeleton roster. And they sent all those players home for that uh, rare uh, acad military academy Academy red shirt year going to be a really tough matchup there. I think Air Force gets the win, but I think and I think that they'll probably drop games to UAB and Marshall, who look to be a uh, really good group of five teams. Uh, period, potentially competing for that New Year's Six spot and definitely topping Conference USA. But I think they're going to snag wins in every other game there to finish off six, eight and four, six and two. With some notable wins here uh, against uh, Old Dominion, West Kentucky, Middle Tennessee to finish the season three and zero down the stretch. So excited to see what FAU can do here, especially with their uh, rehab coach of the year. <laughs> Willie Taggart will be interesting to see what can happen. All right, FIU Panthers, um, disappointing season last year, 0 and 5. I mean, COVID really got them. I think that that was probably one of the big motivators there. But 6 and 7 overall. Uh, Butch Davis coming into his fourth year at FIU. They lost their starting quarterback there. So, uh, not a misspeak on my part this time. They do have to start with a new starting quarterback. Athlon is projecting three and nine, two and six. I think this is going to be a very rough year for FIU, uh, replacing a lot of starters in key positions there, um, having to replace a wide receiver, having to replace uh, three out of the five offensive linemen, having to replace their quarterback. I think they're going to go 111, 0 and 8. Um, now, I, again, I think this is again one of those teams that could potentially prove me wrong. Uh, but I, just with a rough season, six and seven, a couple rough seasons the last few years, actually, actually, sorry, not even just a couple, several last rough seasons, um, and an 0 and 5 record last year uh, with pretty pretty bad wins, uh, pretty bad losses in Middle Tennessee. Jacksonville State FCS team couldn't even get past, past them, even though they are a top-tier FCS team. I think it's going to be another disappointing year for the FIU Panthers. All right, so that's bottom of the conference. Let's talk about the top of the conference here with Marshall Thundering Herd. 7-3 and three record overall last year. Really close to having, I mean, they were on a six-game winning streak there uh, before they ended up dropping the last three games of their season. An unfortunate loss to Rice that they shouldn't have lost that game, really. Uh, really a surprising upset. Lost to UAB in the conference championship game and then lost the bowl game. So a really disappointing finish to the season, but they do return their quarterback who had over 2,000 yards passing and 18 touchdowns and an outstanding quarterback in Grant Wells. Uh, Marshall, of course, going 7-3 last year and 8-5 and the year before that. Uh, but the year before that, I believe, Marshall had a really really good season so i'm excited to see what marshall can do here i, I the athlon sports is not as high on them as i am they're thinking eight and five seven and one so we're actually pretty close. I'm projecting 8-0 and o Conference USA. They're saying 7-1. and one. The difference, with the real difference where it comes about is is in the non-conference schedule. Uh, before I give you my non-conference, what I, my overall record for Marshall projections-wise, let's look at their non-conference schedule. They play Navy, North Carolina Central, um, East Carolina, and Appalachian State. I think that Marshall's going to go 11-1 and one this year and be a contender from that New York Six Bowl. I think they're going to get a win at Navy, who looks to be kind of really having a down year uh, again trying to uh, last season trying to replace Malcolm Perry didn't work out and still this season uh, I think they're going to be still going to be on that downward trend uh, with a lot of interchanging parts trying to fix things up there I think Navy is vulnerable I think Marshall's a good team uh, not just Conference USA standards I think they're a good group of five teams who can go out there and get that win North Carolina Central shouldn't be an issue and I think they'll also get that win against East Carolina so I'm projecting there a 3-0 start. I do think they'll drop that game to Appalachian State. Appalachian State looks like they're going to be another really good uh, Sunbelt team back this year. The Sunbelt looks stacked across the board. They're going to be one of uh, the better group of five conferences for sure. But back to the Conference USA here. I think they will drop that game to Appalachian State, but I think they will go undefeated the rest of the way. Pretty easy Conference USA schedule here. Don't uh, They do have to play UAB. 
Uh, UAB is going to be a challenge, and that, I think, is going to be the big game for Marshall, the biggest game of their season, the last side from the Appalachian State game. Uh, and that really is going to kind of de determine who the winner, or at least the front runner in the Conference USA, is going into that championship game. I do think they pull off the win here. Uh, despite what a lot of analysts are saying, I think Marshall's going to be a very, very good football team. Uh, so 11-1, 8-0 overall, thundering herd. All right, MTSU Blue Raiders, uh, middling of the pack team over the last few seasons, actually bottom tier last few seasons. 3-6 and six last year and 4-8 and eight the season before that. Athlon Sports projecting 5-7, and 3-5. and five. I think they're going to do slightly better than that. I think they're going to get bowl eligible with a 6-6, six 4-4. Six, four and four. So 6-6 six and six overall, 4-4 four and four Conference USA. Uh, they do a pretty... Uh, Slight, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough with a game against Virginia Tech non-conference-wise, but they do have some pretty easy games in Monmouth um, and UTSA here, but they do have to play Liberty, which is a tough non-conference game. Really tough right there having to play Liberty. So I think they'll win against Monmouth. I think they'll drop games to Virginia Tech and to UTSA. It looks like they're going to return a lot of players and be a pretty decent team here. Uh, but I think that they'll, uh, I do think they're going to lose that game to Marshall and to Liberty, but I think they'll pick up wins against Charlotte, uh, Connecticut. I think they can beat Southern Miss. Sorry, that's their other non-conference game since UTSA says in their conference. Uh, Southern Miss looks to be really having a down year. I think that they can pick up a win there and wins against FIU and Old Dominion uh, to get bowl eligible here for MTSU. So excited to see what can happen there. They are having re they return 10 players on offense, but they do have to replace their starting quarterback. Uh, they do have, uh, but their defense looks like it's going to be pretty good with 10 players returning on defense. With 20 players across the board returning overall, I think they're definitely going to be better than what Athlon is projecting. So 6-6 six and six overall is what I'm saying uh, for MTSU. All right, that brings us to Old Dominion. 1-11 last year and 1-11 last year before that. They've won two games over the last two years. I think that this year they're able to win more games than they have in the last two years. Uh, but I do think it's going to be another down year, bottom of the conference type of setup for F for Old Dominion. They only return four players on offense and three players on defense. I believe out of Conference USA, they return the least players of any team. So uh, Athlon is projecting three and nine, one and seven Conference USA. I think they can do a little better than that. I think they'll go three and nine, two and six, uh, wins against Hampton, FIU, and Charlotte. But I think that overall, it's going to be another disappointing season for Old Dominion there. Really trying to get their boots under them. Ricky Ron here in his first season. It's going to be interesting to see what he can do. It's interesting to see if he can turn Old Dominion around. But I think it would take a miracle to make Old Dominion a, even a middle-of-the-pack uh, bowl-eligible team. I think that's a good three years away before they're getting back uh, to being at that level. All right, so uh, Western Kentucky Hilltoppers here. 5-7 uh, and seven record last year, but they went 9-4 and four in 2019. So 5-7 and seven could have been a COVID impact, and it could have been just because of loss of talent. It's really difficult to know there. Sorry, I feel like a sneeze is coming on. I'm going to try and contain it, but we'll see what happens here. Only five players back on offense and four players back on defense. So so really talent lost across the board there, having to replace their quarterback and their running back. Athlon Sports projecting 6-6, six 5-3, and, six, and, and I think they're probably correct on this one. I'm going to say 6-6, six 5-3. Six, I think they'll drop a game to Army here and a game to Indiana, though the Army game could be close. Um, and definitely lost to Michigan State. Really a very tough non-conference schedule. Way to go, Western Kentucky, going out there and scheduling tough teams like that. But I don't think it's going to pay off this year. Uh, I, I do believe they'll be able to get both eligible with a pretty nice mid-season streak here where I think they'll only drop one game to FIU. I think they can get wins against UTSA, Old Dominion, Charlotte, Middle Tennessee, and Rice. Uh, but I do think they're going to have a disappointing end of the season with two losses against FAU and Marshall to finish it off here and finish 6-6, six 5-3 and 5-3 six, and is a pretty fair analysis, I think. Uh, Louisiana Tech Bulldogs, 5-5 five and five last season, 10-3 and three, though the year before that. Uh, Skip Holtz coming into his eighth year here with Louisiana Tech. Um, that ten and three was a really good season for uh, for the for Louisiana Tech, and they might have been able to repeat that in 2020 if it wasn't for COVID. Um, Athlon Sports is saying six and six, five and three. They do lose a lot of. They return ten players on defense. The defense is going to be pretty good, but they only return ten five players on offense. Though they do get to keep their starting quarterback, which could play a huge dividends for them after he passed for sixteen touchdowns, only five interceptions last year. I think it'll be interesting to see. I think the Louisiana Tech could be one of those surprise teams. I'm only project so Athlon Sports six and six, five and three. I'm only projecting seven and five, six and two. But I think it is going to be a pretty good season for Louisiana Tech. I think they're going to be very competitive. Um, in their division, Conference USA-wise. I think they'll drop games to Mississippi State and SMU um, and to NC State. Again, another tough... Conference USA teams really go out there and get some tough uh, non-conference opponents. Uh, big props to them on that 
point. I, I think they're going to drop a lot of those non-conference games that are just very tough, but I think they're going to have a really good conference schedule here with losses of potential, I think, here against UTSA and UAB, but they don't have to play Marshall, so that's good for them. I think they can go 6-2 and two here and have a pretty good season. I think the defense is going to carry them, and the quarterback play is going to be key, but I think they can be better than that 5-5 five and five record and be, really be a contender here in Conference USA. All right, North Texas, Mean Green, 4-6 and six last season, 4-8 and eight the year before that. Uh, Athlon is projecting another 4-8, 3-5 and, eight, three and five Conference USA record, but 4-8 overall season. Um, I think they're better than that. Now, they're returning eight starters on offense and, and nine starters on defense. They do have to replace their starting quarterback there. So that's going to be interesting to see what happens. Uh, but with Seth Luttrell coming in and his sixth season, he's evenly tied 31-31. I think he really wants to come in here and have the North Texas perform well. Looking at the way their season plans out, they have a pretty decently easy uh, Conference USA schedule. I think they're going to go 6-6, six 5-3. Six, so two better wins than what Athlon is projecting. I think they'll be able to get bowl eligible here. Um, it is going to be a rough, rough start to the season, though. I, and I'm North Texas fans, I think you should prepare yourselves for that. I think you'll get a win against FCS Northwestern, but I think you're going to drop about six games here in a row uh, against SMU, UAB, Louisiana Tech, Missouri, Marshall, and Liberty. I mean, that's just a really tough stretch. But the back end, I think North Texas is going to have a complete revival, show themselves that they're better than that, Show that get bowl eligible here with wins against Rice, Southern Miss, UTEP, FIU, and UTSA. Um, oh, Southern Miss is... Uh, I, uh, I I made a mistake earlier when I said Southern Miss was a non-conference game. I apologize for that. I don't remember who I said that for, but I just want to correct myself on that. NTSU plays Connecticut. That's their fourth non-conference game. Sorry. Just wanted to, sorry, a little brain fart there. wanted to apologize. Anyhow, wrap things up here. I think that you, North Texas manages to pull off a pretty nice end of the season here with five wins in a row to get bowl eligible for a nice end of the season here for North Texas, and hopefully they get a pretty decent bowl bid there. It'll be interesting to see what happens, but I think they're going to be one of the uh, surprise turnaround stories there for Conference USA. All right, Rice, perennial uh, bottom in their conference, kind of, uh, again, bottom feeder in Conference USA. Two and three last season, three and nine the year before that. Uh, Mike Blo Blo I don't even know how to say his name. Mike Bloomgreen, Bloomgren, Bloomgren uh, is in his third year, uh, sorry, fourth year, three years so far with a seven and 23 overall record. Athlon Sports projecting 4-8, and 3-5 and five Conference USA. I really don't think that's going to happen. Only six players back on offense having to replace their quarterback and their running back. Eight players back on defense, which is pretty good. But um, they're having to replace their left guard, having to replace their wide receiver here, and, and quarterback and running back. I think it's going to be a really terrible year for Rice. 1-11 overall, 0-8 and eight Conference USA. I think they'll be able to snag a win against Texas Southern. Uh, but I, uh, FCS team there, but I think it's going to be an FBS blowout here with losses across the board, especially in their non-conference where they go again, another tough non-conference schedule, having to go play at Arkansas, having to play Houston, and having to play Texas. I mean, I don't know how these Conference USA teams do it with such incredibly tough non-conference schedules. It's it's really outstanding to see it, but I think it's not going to pay off. Uh, one and eleven for Rice is what I'm saying here overall. So just a couple, a uh, few more teams here to preview. Uh, so about four more teams here towards the end for Conference USA, and then I'm going to wrap up and talk about how I think that their teams are going to stack up in their conference for Conference USA and who their conference championship uh, winner is, according to my projection. So Southern Miss, Golden State, sorry, Southern Miss, Golden Eagles. 3-7 record last year, 7-6, 2019. Uh, kind of a little bit of a downhill trend after that 3 and after that 7-6 record, but I think a lot of that was due to COVID. 6-6, um, 3-5 six and six, three and is what Athlon's projecting. I do think it's going to be a little bit less than that. 5-7, and 3-5. and five. The big reason is that they don't return their starting quarterback. I think that's going to pay big be huge for them. They do return 10 players on defense, though. That's a pretty much a trend we're seeing with Conference USA. There's a lot of players back on defense, so it could be a very interesting defensive year for Conference USA. could potentially see a uh, pretty much dramatic improvement on that front, uh, but I do think that it's going to be a little bit of a challenging year here for Conference USA, for Southern Miss. I do think there's a chance they could get bowl eligible, and they could prove me wrong. This is one of those teams that could potentially end up going 7-5. and five. Uh, They've got a good running back in Frank Gore, who had over 700 yards rushing, one of the better running backs in the Conference USA, one of the best probably in Conference USA. They're going to really rely on him. I think a lot of it will have to do with him if he can stay healthy and if they can find a competent quarterback to back him up there. Uh, but I think they'll open up with wins against South Alabama and Grambling before 
dropping losses to two Alabama teams in Troy and Alabama. That's the big one in Alabama. Um, I think they can snag a win against Rice. I do think they're capable of winning against UTEP here, but I think UTEP is going to pull out the win. If they can win against UTEP, I think they'll be able to get at least bowl eligible, but if they drop it as I'm projecting, I think they'll also drop to UAB, Middle Tennessee, and North Texas uh, with a win against UTSA. Kind of a surprising win there, considering that I think UTSA is probably the better win, but I think that uh, Southern Miss at UTSA, I think maybe being a little bit overlooked, might be able to snag a win. Lost to Louisiana Tech and a win potentially here at FIU. Again, a team that I think is definitely potentially bowl eligible. A team that could definitely get there where it's going to take a little bit of work. I'm not necessarily projecting that they're going to be getting there this season. All right, UAB, uh, again, one of those top, so Marshall and UAB, really the top two teams in Conference USA. Uh, really outstanding teams there. Six and three last year, but UAB was really close to having a much better season than that. They only had a three-point loss to Louisiana Tech in overtime and a four-point loss to Western Kentucky. And they played Miami very well. Not Miami, Ohio. This is Miami of the ACC. Only a 14 to 31 loss, um, which considering everything overall is actually pretty good. Um, so they were two, really two games away there from being not six and three, but uh, eight and one. Could have been a much better season for UAB. Uh, conference uh, Athlon is projecting them nine and four, six and two. Um, so sorry, nine and three regular season, six and two. Um, I'm going to agree on the nine and three, but I think they're going to go seven and one Conference USA. Uh, I do think that they're uh, they're going to drop the game to Liberty, which right now. Uh, the Athlon Sports has them winning. Uh, I think they'll go out and win against Jacksonville State. Again, a good FCS team, so not one to be sleeping on. Lose to Georgia, uh, but they can grab wins against North Texas and Tulane before facing Liberty. I do believe that that's going to be a loss to Liberty. I think Liberty is going to be one of the top um, group of five type teams, even though they are independent. Malik Willis is a Heisman contender. Outstanding. I mean, Liberty is going to be really, really good. Definitely getting slept on by most analysis analysts out there. Going to be really, really good teams. I think they will drop the game to Liberty, but it's no reflection on UAB. UAB is an excellent team. I just think that Liberty is going to be a little bit better here. It's going to be a tough fort battle. Uh, but I think that they're going to pretty much go the rest of the way undefeated until they play Marshall again. That's going to be the real toss-up there. I think it could go either way. I do think Marshall wins the day, at least on the regular season battlefield, and we'll see what happens uh, conference championship-wise. Uh, but again, excellent season overall for UAB as they uh, potentially are one of those teams competing for the New Year's Six Bowl bid. All right, UTEP Miners, last season 3-5, and five, year before that 1-11. So trending upwards considering that they were 1-11 in 2019. Um, a team that is definitely, I mean, that it's really hard to recruit to get teams to come play at UTEP. It really is. It's hard to recruit for most Conference USA teams, but especially hard to recruit for UTEP. 3-9, uh, and 1-7 one seven, one and seven is what Athlon is projecting. I think it could definitely go that way. I think it is going to be a little bit better than that. I think that they can grab a 5-7, and 3-4 and and overall. Uh, they're definitely going to drop that game to Boise State. I think they can pick up wins here, though, against New Mexico State. Uh, Bethan Cookman and New Mexico shouldn't be too difficult with those are that's a pretty easy non-conference schedule besides that Boise State game there uh, I think they can snag some wins here against Old Dominion Southern Miss and Rice but other than that I think that it's probably going to be another disappointing season for UTEP as they really try to rebound here Dan Dimmel's here in his fourth season 5 and 27 record overall so it's really been a rough few years really been a rough three years uh, and counting even beyond that for UTEP uh, so I just don't think uh, they're a Boise State opponent. I'm going to be rooting them on. I would love to see them do better than that. I just don't think it's going to happen this year. All right, finishing up here with UTSA. Uh, UTSA 7-5 and five last season and 4-8 and eight the year before that. So an improvement overall. Uh, they're being projected actually pretty good for Athlon. Athlon's projecting them 8-4, and 6-2. and two. I, I just don't see it. They do, I mean, they, they return the most players of any Conference USA team with 11 players back on defense, every single starter back on defense, and 10 players back on offense. It is a UTSA team that is stacked across the board. We had a pretty good season last year with losses only to UAB, BYU, Army. Um, an FAU loss that was pretty bad that shouldn't have happened, and a loss to Louisiana, which was really close in the bowl game. I mean, they played Louisiana close, and they were a good team. So I'm projecting 6-6, six and six, but I do think that this is one of those teams that I could be wrong on, that could surprise me, that could go out and have an 8-4 and four, like Athlon is projecting, even a 9-3 and three type season. Um, but just looking at this record, I, just, I think they're going to drop that game to Illinois to start the season. Um, uh, though I do think that that's an upset alert type of game. I think UTSA is capable of getting that win at Illinois. I just don't think it's going to happen this season, but I think it's going to be close. Uh, I think they should win against Lamar and Middle Tennessee, no problems. Memphis, though, they're not going to win that game against uh, 
um, American Athletic Team, Memphis. They should be able to win against UNLV. Going to be a pretty down Mountain West team. Western Kentucky is a game where I think they could go in there and win it and probably should win that game, but I think they're probably going to end up dropping that one. Uh, wins against Rice, Louisiana Tech, and UTEP should be pretty nice, but I think they're going to finish off the season with a three-game losing streak. Uh, against Southern Miss, UAB, and North Texas. Now, Southern Miss and North Texas are both games that UTSA should be able to go in there and win, but I, I just have a pretty bad feeling about UTSA overall uh, this season. It's just, it's not a team that I have thought of as a top in their conference type of team. And when I'm looking at the performance overall and consistency, I mean, Jeff Taylor, his first year with the school. So it might be a new program. With It is a new program with UTSA, and they might turn the clock back and actually be a, a really consistent top-level type team. But we just haven't seen that in a long time out of UTSA, and I think that consistency isn't quite there. I think these losses that I'm calling out here could easily go either way. I think they're going to be toss-up games that are going to be come down to maybe one possession type, uh, for most of them at least. I think that, besides maybe the UAB game, which might be a little bit more of a drastic loss. So I think UTSA could be a few win, few points away from a much different season. I'm excited to see what the Roadrunners can do. Um, for recruiting there down in Texas San Antonio is very difficult. Uh, excited to see what they can do. I just doubt, I just, I, I just have... Uh, you know, kind of got a sense about it this time that it's not going to quite be as good as Athlon's projecting or some of the UTSA fans are projecting. But hey, hope they go out there, prove me wrong. Six and six records what I'm projecting. But again, I think it could be a lot better depending on how the ball, uh, how, how do they say it, depending on how the ball falls here a little bit. Okay, so um, finishing this off here, looking at overall projections for the predicted order to finish. So uh, Athlon's projecting Marshall number one. Uh, F, sorry, in the East Division, Marshall number one, FAU number two, W uh, Western Kentucky number three, Charlotte number four, Middle Tennessee number five, FIU number six, and Old Dominion number seven. Uh, I'm going to make a couple changes here. I'm thinking it's going to be Marshall number one. I agree with that. FAU number two, uh, Western Kentucky number three, but I think Middle Tennessee is going to be number four, Old Dominion is going to be number five, Charlotte number six, and uh, FIU number seven. Looking at the West Division, uh, they're saying, uh, Athlon is saying UAB number one, UTSA number two, Louisiana Tech number three, Southern Miss number four, North Texas number five, uh, Rice number six, and then UTEP number seven. I'm going to make some pretty drastic changes in this order. I do believe that UAB will be the top team in the West Division, but beyond them, I think Louisiana Tech will be number two, North Texas will be number three. Um, yeah, sorry, North Texas will be number three, UTSA will be number four, um, UTEP will be number five, Southern Miss will be number six, and Rice will be number seven. So pretty drastic change there in the West Division. They com uh, Athlon is projecting UAB winning over Marshall in the conference championship game. Like I said, I think Marshall is going to win that head-to-head -head during the regular season. But I do believe that UAB is going to catch them in the conference championship game. They're going to learn from their mistakes. Uh, they're going to watch that film over and over, over again and come in motivated. And I think UAB is going to beat Marshall in that conference championship game. Basically, whoever wins the regular season matchup, I think, because I believe both these teams are going to play in the conference championship game, whoever wins that regular season matchup, I think, will lose in the conference championship game. So if UAB manages to pull off the win against Marshall in the regular season, I think Marshall will come in a little bit more motivated and get that win in the conference championship game. Either way, it's going to be one of the more exciting group of five conference championship games to watch. I'll be uh, very interested to watch that. And there's potential here that one of these teams could be playing for a New Year's Six spot, depending on how things shake out. Uh, again, Conference USA viewed as one of the weakest of the uh, group of five conferences, if not the weakest of the group of five conferences. So it's going to be difficult to win over the voters, but depending on how things shake out and depending on, I, I mean, UAB could be coming here down the end of the season with a 10-3 and record overall if they beat Marshall. And if Marshall was to win, they could have a 12-1 and record overall. Both of those are pretty competitive records for a New Year's Six spot. At least getting a good bowl game for sure uh, would be definitely in the cards for either of these teams. Make sure to like and subscribe. It's not just Boise State content, as you've seen. I also talked about general college football overall, and I do have a video coming out at the end of this series where I'm going to be previewing the race for the New Year's Six and talking about the teams in contention for that and giving my prediction on who I think will be winning or going to the New Year's Six game at the end of the season. So thank you for watching this video, and as always, go Big Blue!